Hello everybody! In this video I will show you an interesting circular magnet array that has an electromagnet in its center. So what you see here is the array itself. The outer windings or the outer coil that you see here are not connected or used. This was from a different experiment. But here at the center we have an electromagnet with a steel core. So this is just a coil wound around a steel core and this is connected to an audio amplifier that gets a signal from a signal generator. And now I will place a magnetic viewing film on top of it and you can already see the field shape of it when no power is applied. And now I will turn on this audio amplifier and you can see how the field collapses and expands in real time. This is at the signal rate of 1 Hz. I can also increase it a bit. Now we are at 4 Hz. As you can see, it goes a bit faster. And now I will also show you what this looks like in close up and slow motion so you can get an even better idea of it. And after that, I will explain to you how this works and show you some more interesting experiments with it. So here you can see the expanding and collapsing field in slow motion. And if you look closely, you can not only see in the center that the field shape changes, but also on the outer edges, you will see these impulses where, yeah, basically the field pulses and changes the overall whole shape of the entire field, which is kind of interesting, I think. So now you have seen the device in slow motion and I will explain to you how I built this. So this is a circular magnet array consisting of 16 magnets, meaning these are two layers. It is the same array that I used here and also the same array that I use for my water memory cleaning device. And this is basically just 16 of these magnets that looks like this, as you can see under the field viewer. And the difference that you can already see here in the center, we have another white ring, so the center looks different. This is because of the iron core of the electromagnet. Right now there is no power applied to it, and you can see the, yeah, the field has already changed. If I turn it on again, you can see the difference even more how it expands and retracts. So this is how I built the array itself and for the electromagnet this is an earlier prototype of it. This one is without an iron core, this is with a plastic core. It doesn't work so well because without an iron core the field strength is very weak. So that's why I used an iron core in here. And basically this is just a cylindrical coil wrapped around an iron core. So what I've done here is I've placed the magnet array upright like this and then I've placed the compass right in front of it. And what you can see here is that it wants to go back and forth. So I've applied an AC signal at 2 Hz on this magnet array and you can see as the compass tilts back and forth and it can't rotate full rotation within this time because it has some friction and it's also an older compass but anyways you can see how the orientation of this magnet array the polarity flips back and forth and now I will explain to you why this happens so with this magnet array I have 16 magnets and an electromagnet in the center core. And this array that I have here is the exact same array. So I will take it apart and explain to you how I arrange the magnets. I have all north poles facing inwards with this array and the opposite here, all south poles facing inwards here on this array. If you put them together like this and put a compass nearby, you will see 
you have North Pole on this side and South Pole on this side. And if you put a magnet in the center, you can flip the orientation of the polarity of the whole array depending on in which direction you put the magnet in the, into here. I will show you this with a bigger array that I've showed you in an earlier video called Inverting the Polarity of a Circular Magnet Array. You can ignore the coils, this was for different experiments. This is just about the magnet array itself. So let me zoom out a bit. I will take it like this and you can see North Pole is on this side. And now I will remove the center magnet, which is a bit tricky. And then I will add the magnet again. Oh, now I have taken it the same direction. It should go this way. It really doesn't want to stay in there if I don't center it perfectly, like this. And you can see now we have South Pole on this side. So basically, when I insert it like this, and it is perfectly centered, it stays in the center, and we have no forces that um, push the magnet out in this or this direction, and it stays perfectly in center with no forces acting on it in this or this direction. But as soon as, as you can see, slightly move it outwards, it's get, it gets pushed outwards very violently. And the opposite is happening. If I do it in this direction, first doesn't want to go in there, but as soon as I get close in it, to it, it gets sucked in and it also wants to stay at the center and doesn't move in any direction anymore and the orientation has flipped to North Pole and this is what we are doing with the array with the electromagnet if I apply an AC signal to the center electromagnet the polarity flips meaning we get either North or South Pole at the center and yeah, this basically flips the whole magnetic polarity orientation of the whole array. So what you see here is my oscilloscope that is connected directly to the coil or the electromagnet. And right now I am driving the coil at 49 kilohertz, which is the resonant frequency of the coil itself. And as you can see, we have quite high peak-to-peak -peak voltages of around 114 volts. The maximum output of my audio amplifier is 27 volts peak-to-peak, -peak, but yeah, I didn't even use half of the maximum power output. This is just because I'm driving it at the resonant frequency and that increases the voltage. I can show you this when I turn up the frequency, you will see the peak-to-peak -peak voltage will go down again if I increase my frequency and the same goes for when I decrease the frequency below the resonant frequency and let me adjust the timings as you can also see the signal shape changes with the frequency quite much as I go down even more and now we approach the audible frequency range as you can probably already hear this noise, I hope you can hear it on the video comes from the coil itself that is oscillating. I will adjust it a bit again. And you can see how the shape of the amplitude changes. If 
they go down even more. Also our peak to peak voltage goes down a lot compared to the resonant frequency. What you're hearing is a frequency of 1 kHz that comes directly from the coil that is oscillating. And you see we get a very interesting signal form with the spikes here. Also if I go down even more. Yeah, you can see how it changes. If I adjust it a bit, we get a lot of these strange spikes. And this is just what I wanted to show you. What happens when you apply different frequencies to this electromagnet and how it alters the shape of the signal and also the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of it. Now we'll go again to our resonant frequency and you can see how the peak-to-peak -peak voltage starts to rise. So this is it for this video. I will show you some more slow motion footage of the expanding and collapsing field. And thanks for watching and goodbye.